to end up doing that price setting? And I ask that question for two reasons. On the one hand, they're highly regulated institutions that in many respects behave like utilities now. Secondly, the non-bank securities industry used to perform that function before 2008, and it's gone. Merrill's gone, Bear Stearns is gone, Lehman is gone, as we know. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley are banks. So that's a very interesting question. No, no doubt that banks were setting the marginal price of risk, perhaps overly so between 04 and 07. No one wants to go back to that again. You're making a separate but related point that the broker-dealer model, which I grew up with, I, may, I made my debut at a firm called Kira Peabody, which no longer exists. So middle-sized firms, which were dynamic, very client-focused, but wholesale funded, defined Wall Street back then. It yes, wasn't JP Morgan and Citibank. It was Goldman, Solomon, yes. Morgan Stanley. The, fir the, the firmament of the top players were those firms. Now, what's happened post the crisis is you have in the investment banking corporate finance space, the hyper boutique, which has done very well. Uh, I believe there is room for the more middle-sized, not all things to all people, nimble organizations, and I think you will see some of that. And that's, in effect, what you're doing now with Howard Ludnick and Cantor Fitzgerald, trying to build a firm of that nature. You know? So once again, I mean, the big issue with these banks, and if you didn't watch the previous video, is the price discovery, the price setting of rates is not really up to the banks anymore. Um, they brought up in the previous video that it's the central bankers that control it. So in a way, this financial collapse of 08 was a central banker and basically people uh, who want to have more control of our financial system a dream because basically you allow four major banks to become even more powerful, even more big, too big to fail. And at the same time, instead of the old model where the market would drive the rates, you allow uh, the Fed and other central banks in like Europe to basically dictate the price. So basically all we're doing is we're making these banks stronger, giving more power to the central banks. And what this does is the opposite of cr crypto. Uh, banking and finance is basically becoming more and more centralized and less competitors in the market. Uh, and it allows these big monopolies to reap huge profits. And, and it's a kind of a winner take all model that we have obviously seen with globalization. And the only counter to this is crypto. So um, unfortunately, it's going to be an uphill battle and the prices of crypto are going to be uh, art artificially low for a while. But eventually, like I said, there's going to be people that are not going to want to deal with this system and they're going to want to use, if not crypto, something similar to crypto to be able to have more control, more sovereignty and not let a couple of central bankers or large government monopoly banks to kind of dictate and uh, control the market. But let me know your thoughts on this and I will talk to you soon.